Whoa! <laughs> Hi friends! Today, I want to show you how to circuit bend a 4-track recorder with a customized pitch control. This is a Tascam Porta 2 Mark II, but you can do it to a Tascam Porta 3 Mark II or a Fostex X12, or any 4-track recorder that you have. With the Fostex, I think it's a little bit easier as it already has the motor that I believe you need to do the job properly. Nonetheless, I'm going to show you two different processes for getting this job done so that you can have your own customized pitch control and a 4-track recorder. You may have seen these on YouTube, but people always show the feature and not the process. In this video, I'm going to show you the tools needed and the exact process to get the job done right. Let's do this. Well, here we are. This is the Tascam Ported 2 Mark II, and we're going to circuit bend it. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom cover off. And if you remember from my previous videos, it's simply a matter of removing these three screws. And there's three screws. I'm keen on organization, and if you remember from my previous videos, I like to keep uh, bags with naming so that I can keep the screws in the proper place. Um, I know this is a simple device, but um, I prefer to still get in the practice of keeping things organized. Uh, as you get into more complicated things, it'll be harder to keep track of stuff, so it's definitely a good practice. Okay, the way this thing comes apart, if you remember from my previous videos, we're going to place pressure here and we're going to lift up on the little lip latch here. And the way I do it is I press there and then lift along this edge and pop it open. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to leave the original motor inside and we're going to take the positive wire and we're going to disconnect it and then we're going to attach a potentiometer in between the positive wire and then you're going to run the positive wire to one side of the potentiometer and then you're going to run another wire back to the other side of the positive input on the motor. And that's going to allow the resistance of the potentiometer to change the speed of the motor. It's not really a recommended way of doing it because I'm not sure how it how it um, how it affects the motor in the long run. Um, I've had one like this for a while and it seems fine, but it definitely uh, the motor isn't rated to do that. So in the next section, I'm going to show you how to do it. What I believe is the proper way with a variable speed motor. So we're actually going to re remove this little wiring harness now so we can uh, drill the hole right here. Um, it's in order for the potentiometer to go through. If you can see here, the potentiometer, it's going to sit just about right here. And it just so happens it's about midway uh, between the LED and the, um, the counter hole. It sits slightly more toward the LED, I find. And uh, it, th this will not get in the way. So why don't we first remove these little wiring harnesses. And um, if you didn't see my previous video about taking these apart, they're pretty self-explanatory. Um, but you might want to take a photo if it's your first time doing it. Just, again, get in the practice of um, making sure you're covering your bases so that it, when you put it back together, you don't get lost, especially with more complicated devices. And by lifting these, you if you look at this, you can see how it has a little lip on each side. And you're going to sort of grip on the side, and you don't want to grip the wires themselves. The wires might come loose and that would be bad. Um, so 
sometimes you just wiggle them back and forth. And you, you can grab the plastic on the sides, not the wires, and pull it up like that. Um, you see my thumb doesn't really fit right here, so I'm just going to... Easier to grab these little sides here, like that. And this, you know, we'll put it to the side. And we're left with the top, which we're going to drill a hole. The potentiometer, it's going to sit just about right here. And it just so happens it's about midway uh, between the LED and the, um, the counter hole. We're going to start with a smaller drill bit size so that we can get the hole started. And we'll slowly build up from there. Right about there. And... Drill bit sound effect. That's about right. I actually lost the audio to this. Um, well, I had just the camera audio. And it's pretty poor, so I'm trying to just um, do a voiceover for this section. And now that we have that one done, we're going to in increase the size of the drill bit to the next drill bit size up. And you're doing this because you want to make sure that uh, the drill bit doesn't get stuck. The bigger ones will get stuck. Um, if you start off with a bigger one, you might scar the face of the unit. More drill bit effect sounds. <laughs> As I mentioned, like when you try to go to too big of a drill bit size too fast, um, it gets stuck in the plastic and it seems to chew it up pretty bad. So the um, best way to do it is just like slowly increase the drill bit size one by one. It seems a little tedious, but kind of guarantees you're not going to have a, a mistake. I also want to add like, um, you know, once again, safety, uh, please wear safety glasses um, because drill bits... It, you know, it probably wouldn't happen in this scenario, but drill bits do break. Um, things get caught and go flying off. So just always protect your eyes. I'm actually the victim of um, uh, eye damage, and uh, it's it's not cool. So you wanna you wanna always make sure you're taking care of yourself. It does happen. Um, you could probably size up your drill bit. Just eyeball it with a drill bit. Um, and that drill bit's slightly smaller, but uh, usually drill bit sets come with like a sizing, a gauge sizing thing. And um, unfortunately, I don't have a drill bit size that's like, quite big enough. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this hole, and then I'm going to... Um, you can So you can see it's getting kind of stuck there. Um, so the bigger sizes, they um, definitely get... I'm probably not even using the right kind of drill bit, to be honest with you, for plastic. I'm sure somebody out there can tell me that I'm doing it wrong. But um, anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this and I'm going to kind of treat it like it's a router. And I'm going to like sort of go back and forth and um, move it around and just kind of make the hole a little bit bigger. And, and I'll just slowly do this until the potentiometer fits through the hole. And um, right here I'm lecturing you about wearing eye protection. And if you saw my previous video about five essential tips for making a good soldering joint, then um, I talk a lot about safety there as well. Uh, one thing I didn't mention in the previous 
video, I don't think, is that uh, one of my tips on safety is to make sure that when you're soldering, um, don't do it in an area where you're going to consume food or beverages. Uh, solder does contain lead. Um, you don't want to ingest it by accident. It does pop and sputter around. Anyway, I'm talking about this little metal lip here on the um, on the potentiometer. They come stock with it on there, and it's easy to break off. You're just going to grab it with needle nose pliers, and you're just going to snap it off. Just a little piece of metal that prevents it from sitting flush. I think it's a kind of like a locking thing, so that if you drilled like another little side hole, then you could use it to, um, uh, you know, make sure it doesn't turn when you um, screw it on. And it fits perfectly. And yeah, it gives enough room to attach the wires. And um, yeah, I think I made it a little more to the power LED than I normally do. But I do that because there's a little extra of the counter, as you can see, that I just don't want it to run into and get stuck on. So now we're going to reattach all this stuff. Put it right there. It's pretty obvious where these all go. So again, like I know I suggested maybe taking a photo or um, just, you know, it's just forgetting in the practice of doing it. We're going to desolder the uh, power and the ground. I'm sorry, just the power wire from the, the, the motor. My, the temperature we're looking for is about 350 degrees Celsius. Um, I think you're going to want to definitely have uh, a wet sponge so you can clean your soldering iron off in between every solder application. You can also use this um, steel wool sort of thing. I forgot the name of it, but uh, it's a rough steel wool that really removes um, the solder off of the tip. It's really nice. You want to make sure you're using the right size soldering tip and the right kind. For this job, I like a small chisel tip soldering tip. I find that it distributes the heat in just the way I want it to do. It came, they normally come with like a small pointy one, but they don't work as well for this job. And this is a soldering uh, pump, and it removes solder. You can use either a soldering wick or a solder sucker, as they say. And you're just going to heat the solder up and then place the solder sucker on there and remove it. And you, if you, remember, you didn't see my previous video, one of the things we want to do is have an in and out approach when soldering or desoldering. You don't want to damage components. Um, heat and time are what damage components. So you want to kind of heat up the solder for about a second, place that on there, and boom, suck the solder right off. Now, some of the solder may still be slightly connected to the wire, so I'm just going to heat it again for a second and just pull the wire clear. Boom. There you go. This motor has a little capacitor on the underside, um, so I'm going to want to solder that back together because the solder sucker removed all the solder off of there. This wire isn't very long, so I'm going to add an extension to it, um, like you see here. So I'm going to use these little vice grips and a needle nose plier to uh, slowly strip them. I don't have a proper wire stripper, but if you notice on these, they have like a, a little area to strip with, and you lightly clamp with your left and um, lightly clamp to just get through to the wire and then pull off. And you see, you just pull it off, and then you're going to twist the wire together, the little braids. And then we're going to tin it. Um, in order to do this properly, you're probably going to want like what's called a helping hands. It's like a little series of grips, uh, alligator clips that, um, here I'll show you. Un unfortunately, I left my camera on automatic. I forgot to set the the distances, so there's going to be a few little sections that are slightly blurry, and I do apologize for that. However, it's pretty easy to see um, what I'm doing still. I'm just, I'm just tinning the tip here. 
So I'm just like heating the little copper wire and then I'm going to add some solder to it. And it just kind of soaks up inside there and gets it tinned, which makes it a lot easier to um, attach it to other things. I'm going to do the same with the potentiometer here. I think the video clears up here. There you go. Yeah, I don't it just doesn't want to focus on that wire for some reason. Oh, you got to take off these little uh, protector things. They're helpful for not damaging like sensitive PCB board and stuff like that. But with the potentiometer is metal. So you can see this potentiometer has been used. So I'm just kind of like straightening out some of the solder that's on it and making sure it's like just even over the so you can see a bunch of old junk got on the end of the soldering iron, so that's why you got to clean it. I'm showing you here the, the sponge method. I prefer a combo of using the sponge and the steel wool. Okay, so the helping hands are great here because they're going to basically give you room to use your hands for the soldering iron and the solder, which is really important. Essentially, um, if I can keep this all in frame here, uh, yeah, just be careful you don't burn yourself, obviously. But uh, so all I did was I heated the component and then I just attached the wire to it. And since they were both tinned, it, the solder melted really quickly on both components. And um, I, I left it there for about a second on the component, and then I added the wire, and then they stuck together. And you have a clean solder connection. So I'm going to clean the tip of the solder, soldering iron, put it back, and then this is all connected, slightly blurry. And what I'd normally do is I'd run heat shrink uh, tube over these once I've got them connected to the potentiometer in the way that I know I want them done and that just keeps it um, the connection really safe and um, but in this case um, I don't need to just yet and since I'm going to use this potentiometer for the correct way to, to make this um, then I'm just going to go ahead and um, not put the heat shrink tube on there just yet you'll see it in the next portion so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of those wire extensions from the potentiometer and um, I'm going to attach it to the power. So I'm just going to kind of move the solder around on this just a little bit and get it kind of even. And then I'm going to get smart here and use um, a tool to hold it out in a horizontal fashion makes it a lot easier and uh, clean the tip again you can just see there how I'm doing it I'm just placing the wires together Helping hands would be a lot better here um, to hold them in place, but I'm just going to heat these wires up and they're connected. And it's probably not a super great solder job, um, but for demonstration purposes for this video, it's going to be just fine. And you kind of want a, like a nice shiny piece of solder here. Um, so I'm going to just kind of clean the tip and then move the solder around a little bit and add just a tiny bit more so it fully covers both components because remember there's a capacitor there as well and it looks pretty good now and you can see that it's shiny and uh, covers the components perfectly so now we're going to test this out let's um, attach a power and see if it works this is a Tascam I've marked my power supplies but you can see it's 12 volts center negative um, I just turned it off, but uh, it was already on the on position, and uh, I'm going to turn it on. Now, this is 
an endless cassette, but just be careful. This is not a battery powered thing. This is live power. So please don't be sticking your hands in unsafe areas. Um, so I have it on. The potentiometer was on max. That's why it was slowed down. So now you can see it's working. Um, this type of connection, it, since it's connected to a motor without a control board, you're only going to be able to slow down the speed, the RPMs. So technically it's just going to slow down a tape and you can get it all the way to completely stop as you just saw. So this is a method that'll work and it's the easiest way to do it, but it's, I'm not sure about the longevity of the motor if, if you uh, do this and play with it a lot. You could use a blank tape and you could put the potentiometer at a slower speed and then record at that speed. And then when you turn it back up, it should be a faster uh, speed at that point, if that makes sense. So it's not natural to this thing and it doesn't really want to behave that way. Um, so you kind of have to play with it to get it to work in a pitch up or pitch down sort of fashion, but you can do it. Uh, a regular pre-recorded tape will, um, unfortunately, it will just uh, only slow down. It'll never pitch up. But like I said, you can take a blank tape and you could record at a slower speed and then you could um, get it to work that way. We're going to, I'm showing you how you can, if you, if you did this version, you could just close it and push the potentiometer through the hole and uh, and then you know screw it down and you have a variable speed but now I'm going to show you the way that I think is the right way to do it with the variable speed motor um, so I'll go ahead and desolder this all these components and put it back together like normal and then we're going to go through the other process from scratch except for the fact that we already have a hole in oh here we are part two this is the proper way to do it and we're gonna add a pitch control to the task cam port two. And um, I'm, we've already drilled the hole, as you can see in the previous video, uh, section of this video. Um, that was for the cheaper way of making a pitch control. Um, but if you fast forwarded to this part, we've essentially figured out where the hole goes and then removed the top cover. And then we used, uh, we did that by flipping it over and removing these three screws and popping them out and then um, placing our hands here and here and um, taking the cover off. And um, there's little little lip sections and you can um, pop it off right there. And then just be careful, normally you're, I'm bracing it against my body and not trying to keep it in frame and so uh, it pops open quite wildly here. So to drill the hole I removed the wiring harness in the previous section, measured where the hole goes and then um, you know found the best place for it and uh, put it right there. Once we figured out where the hole went um, it's in line with the power LED and you know, kind of centered between the power LED and it won't hit this metal piece there. So we also had to break off the little lip on the, um, that comes on all the potentiometers. It's like a little latch thing. Um, otherwise it won't sit flush. So in this version, we're gonna have to remove this motor. And all we did in the previous video is we added a potentiometer between the power lead and the motor and that basically pitched it down um, it's not the most effective way to do it what we want to do is use this uh, this is a clockwise direction Mabuchi motor um, with a variable speed um, so this is actually a good time to talk about tools that you're going to need for this project The tools we're going to use are um, obviously a drill, um, some pliers like uh, vice grips. Um, I'm going to post the pictures here. You're going to have vice grips, um, needle nose pliers, drill, drill bits, um, screwdriver, and the precision screwdriver. 
then you're going to obviously need a soldering kit and it's going to come equipped with a solder sucker, soldering gun. And that's what the soldering gun looks like. You'll have your wet sponge. You have your proper solder. It's um, lead solder. It's don't get the lead free solder. It doesn't work as well. You want a pair of these vice grips here. You're going to use the, like I said, the proper solder. It's like a 60, 40, 10 lead mix. It has a little bit of rosin flux inside of it, which helps. Um, like I said, don't use the non lead solder. It doesn't work very well. So we're going to want to have a few things that are optional as well. Like, uh, the helping hands, um, is a really good option to have the steel wool sort of, um, cleaner for the soldering tip is really great. Um, I can't say enough about the, um, the helping hands. You could use like a soldering vise, but the helping hands is great. It has multiple little hands and it's awesome. You know, um, the helping hands really works with like these little PCB boards to hold it in place. It's really great. Uh, multimeter is helpful as well, um, as you can see, but I um, don't think it's necessary, but it'll help you in various areas of identifying um, the which direction the potentiometer resistance goes, depending on which posts you have connected. Uh, you'll also be able to see, you know, on other electronics what things are connected. And um, so you're going to need, as you see in this next slide, potentiometers, the 500 ohm, and then you're going to need these um, sort of variable resistor potentiometers, which are about 200 ohm. Um, and you're going to need the Mabuchi motor that I, I've shown you and mentioned, and the PCB board. And uh, so I'm going to show you a schematic here. And that schematic is essentially what we're going to build. It's the way I found to wire it that works really well in the best possible way and gives me the highest and lowest amount of pitch that I want. Um, there's other ways to wire it, but I found this to be really useful. I customized this myself and I'm, you know, happy with it. Uh, it works really great and it's worked consistently. So I'm definitely not an electrical engineer, but I've had years of experience with electronics and uh, I've tested this out quite a bit and I know it works great. Now this is a schematic here that is basically a practical example of what we're doing. So it shows you the components and exactly how we're going to wire it. Um, it's not to scale, so you're going to use longer wires and stuff um, in a wiring harness, but I just wanted you to see kind of what it looks like in general um, once it's all put together. So. Yeah, these few screens are basically showing you what you need, some optional things that you could get, and the way you're supposed to wire it. We're going to install this Mabuchi motor. Um, I got it on eBay. If you buy a version that's counterclockwise, just make sure that you reverse the polarity of the power and ground so it spins in a clockwise direction. But this one is clockwise. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to take our soldering iron and clean it off. Show you again. Let me get my hand in the way. <laughs> All I'm doing is heating up the solder and then just pulling the wire down out of it. And I remove both the power and the, and the negative. So now that we have the positive and the negative removed, it's really simple to uh, take the motor out. What you want to do is you want to use your screwdriver and just uh, unscrew these five screws. Just gotta get all my little screws here. Normally I mark these bags, but um, 
in this case I'm just I know that I'm only using these screws for this bag so I don't need to really mark it I know what it goes to but you know keep them in there that way you don't lose them you get tools all over the place now we're gonna remove the um, the 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 motor down here you can see the belt um, in a previous video I had replaced these belts actually so this is a brand new belt um, but you can see how it's connected to the motor and you just gonna take the belt off and then we're gonna unscrew these screws that hold the motor in now I've got my precision screwdriver and we're gonna use that on these and they open or they come undone real easy proper tool for the proper job I'm not gonna use a bag for these because I'm gonna put the other motor directly in here so so that comes out. You remember there, I mentioned the capacitor, there it is. Um, this little thing here, we're gonna remove this, but I think I'm gonna have to use a knife to do that. There we go. And be careful with the knife, kids. And I'm just gonna slowly shave it off here. Out of frame. Great. I'm just being really careful to shave it really slowly so that I don't cut through and you know accidentally cut myself. We'll use some scotch tape to um, stick it to the top there. Um, with this motor, we're going to need this little pulley taken off the bottom. Uh, the motors sometimes come with them, but this one doesn't. So we're going to use the dull edge of the knife here and just kind of use some leverage. Uh, and it, it comes off really easy, so just put, place your thumb there uh, so the pulley doesn't go flying. And you just kind of lift it up. And then you can see the um, has a little lip that is on the bottom side. I don't know if it's necessary, but I'm just going to put it back on this motor in the correct way. And push it on to about right there. And then the motor is going to slip right in here. And it has the same hole pattern, so we're going to slip it in there, and we're just going to screw it back together. Uh, line it up and so that the control board is kind of facing that open area that you see down by my thumb. So uh, here I am just screwing in the other one side of this motor, tighten it down, not too tight, but you know, definitely don't want to lose. We're going to put the belt back on and the belt goes around this little black plastic piece. And then I just use something like this to, whoops, there we go. Put that around there. And the belt's back on. You fit this down on the little pegs, and then you're going to observe where the uh, ground goes and make sure you reattach those. Those are important. The chassis ground is going to go right here on this one. We're going to attach it um, later on. But you'll see that in the schematic that one of them has to go to chassis ground. You want to make sure you're not pinching these wires or doing what I just did, which is i got to take this off because the ground wire is kind of around up. I got it kind of underneath there, so you don't want them caught. You want them free like this, so there we go. It's funny how when you do this, um, you're trying to keep everything in frame. It's hard to see. I can't actually see over the lip of the bottom there of the task cam, so I lost a screw again. I'm trying to keep my head from popping in frame. This guy has like a little ground and a... Um, it's kind of a pain because it has like a ground and it also has a little uh, wire holder and... It, uh, 
for some reason getting the screw through those can sometimes get it stuck. So it's not too much of a big deal, but just, you know, just so you know. And you just get it through there and then you put it down and screw it in. Yeah, the grounds are pretty important, so just definitely double check and make sure you're always reattaching the ground. And there's the screw I lost. And okay, what we gotta do is we gotta prep everything. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna attach the power and the and the ground first since it's the easiest thing to do and it's clearly marked on the battery or on the motor so you you can see where it says positive and negative and we'll attach the red to positive and the black to negative and um, then we're gonna test the motor really quick just to make sure everything's functioning before we go through too much trouble. We're gonna go ahead and run the wires up through the positive and negative. Again, red's going to the little plus symbol and black is going to the little minus symbol. Now I bend them back a little bit. I know you can't really see here, but I'm just basically bending them so they're not touching and that when the solder gets over them that they make a full complete connection between the wire and the pad and also it doesn't run over to positive and negative, you know, you don't want them shorting each other out. There's a lot of videos online for good soldering techniques that show you like clear examples. My previous video I even show how to do it, so if you need a more um, visual close-up of what it looks like when you're soldering, then just watch that video or just look up basic soldering videos. There's a, a ton of them. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to tin the tip really quick. And uh, as I mentioned, it's an in and out approach that you want. So you get some, you tend the tip and then you're going to, you're going to want to place the tip on there for about a second and heat the component area up. And then you're going to add the solder and then you're going to hold the tip on for like another second after you remove the wire, or after you remove the solder and then, then you remove the tip and it basically should be a nice, bright and shiny solder connection. So I'll place the tip. Heat it, add the solder, leave it, remove. Now I'm doing what I've said not to do, which is continue to add more solder, but in this case it works. I'm just kind of smoothing it out. It's not perfect, but um, what I have going on here actually is my soldering iron is a little too hot. Um, I have kind of a cheaper soldering iron, so I think it, it says 350, but I think it's running a little hot. So I get wise to it a little bit later, and then everything's working much better. But we'll do this one better here. So I'm tinning the tip. I'm going to adjust the wire. I'm going to use something to kind of hold it so that the wire is facing the direction I want it to face. And that helps. And now I'm going to just place it on there, hold it for a second, add the solder, hold it, remove. and that's a much better solder connection. But yeah, I do believe my tips is a little bit too hot. I don't want to apply the solder soldering iron for too long because like I said before, the combination of heat and time are what's going to damage components and the data run could actually come up off the control board on these if you uh, overwork them with heat. So be very careful of that. Just you know, maybe practice your soldering if you've never done it before on just a couple components. Um, but let's test this motor out really quick to make sure it works. And this is open, so um, it's not a 9 volt or 12 volt battery powered thing. It's live electronics. Don't put your hands in there. Um, and just, I'm going to turn it on, be very careful, press play, and I can see that it's running. Uh, so I know the battery, uh, the motor works. So we're no longer going to need this motor, but I just keep it on hand in case um, you're 
Tascam goes bad someday or something and you need to throw another motor in there, it won't be variable unless you do the other version that I showed. But um, it's nice to just have it uh, as a backup in case something goes wrong. And I'll keep it safe and just put it in this original packaging. Turn this off, remove the power. So now it's safe and we're gonna scotch tape that on there at a later, well, but use this little bit of tape that I've placed on, on here. Just try to temporarily tack this on, but later on we can use like scotch tape to get it on there properly. This uh, just kind of protects it from like, it's like a little cushion in case you press down, I don't know, it's supposed to protect the motor. So we have the positive and negative wired and we know it works. So now it's a matter of wiring up the potentiometers together. Okay, we're ready to um, get to the next part. I prefer these little wiring harnesses. Uh, they have a male and a female end. So it's kind of a nice little extension and helps you to take things apart when you're opening this thing. But they're also tempered with solder, so it's um, are tinned with solder, so it makes it really easy to just kind of get it in here. So I'm just going to place these inside the A and B hole on the control board. And then we're going to solder them on in the way that we did the power and, and ground. Ten, you know, clean and then tin the tip. The solder on the tip aids in the heat transfer. We're going to heat it up for a second. Add the solder. Heat it. And remove. And nice clean soldering connection. Heat. Add the solder and remove. So what I've done differently here is I've turned down the heat on my uh, soldering gun and it works really well. And, yeah, because anything between 350 and 400 is good and this cheap soldering iron, I'm pretty sure it's running hotter, so I had to turn it down a little bit. This says about like 320, but I think it's probably closer to 350. Once I turned it down and adjusted the heat, everything was working much better. So we have the positive and negative connected. We have the wiring harness connected. We're, we're gonna wire it up now. Move this out of the way. We're gonna talk about this potentiometer here. It's a 200 ohm potentiometer. It's got three little legs and uh, it's like it's big brother. Um, so we're going to wire them up in the same manner. The two of them are the part uh, that are going to control, and then the one's going to go to ground. But on this potentiometer here, one wire is not going to ground, only on the little one. If you need to refer back to the schematic, the, the, big, the 500 ohm is not going to have a ground. Um, this is just a simple PCB board. You can purchase these on Amazon. And I'll cut it to size um, with some side cutters, but this fits perfectly with these little components. Um, I know where to place it, so I'm just counting out um, where to place it for the size that I want and where I have to cut it. Um, Yeah, I know from measuring this out in the past that this is the way I want it to be, so um, I don't know if green against green is a good idea for this video, but uh, here we are. So I'm trying to show you with the blue against it or something, if you can kind of just see where the wires are. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bend the legs a little bit in um, opposite directions so that it holds it in place. But I'm not bending the legs all the way down, I'm just bending them at about a 45 degree angle.
So we're going to get up the helping hands here, and we're going to um, wire this board together. But we're going to try to touch the component in the component board and for hold it for about a second, as I mentioned. Then we apply the solder to it, pull the solder away, leave the tip on there for about another second, and then pull it away. So apply the heat, add the solder, and then hold it and then remove. Apply the heat, apply the solder, remove. Another good connection. We're going to take a pair of side cutters and we're going to clip off the excess component wire so that it doesn't hang down too far. So now that we've cut those little wires off, we're going to connect these legs to some wire. And I'm going to show you down here how I, another way to tend the wires. So I've stripped these and we're going to twist the braid so that it's no stray wires. And then and you can just have your solder hanging off like this. Take your soldering gun, tend it a little bit, and then heat heat the wire. And then you're gonna just run it against together with the wire, this and the soldering tip, run it against the solder and it tends it really fast. So heat the wire and then run it against the solder. So you're basically holding the tip against the wire and then you're running them together against the solder and it fills up the, the wire with the solder. So now what we're gonna do, you, know, you could tend these in sort of a similar way. Just heat them and then touch the solder and it gets tin all over it. So yeah, you can see it basically tend them so that it makes the wire that's tend really easy to attach to the component. And the heat shrink is going to slip over these and that later on, once this is attached, we can put the heat shrink over it, heat shrink it, and then it's a really nice connection. Like a less chance of breakage. We're going to want to cut this board down the size so that we have the proper size to screw it into the thing. But um, I'm just going to show you how to do that really quick. We're going to take these side cutters. And it's super easy. You just cut it. Like that.
I know that this has to be cut in sort of an L shape because I've done this before so you'll have to kind of measure it out for yourself but um, I just know what I got to do here so I'm just cutting it really quick none of these little holes on the PCB board are actually connected so they're sort of independent of one another so um, you have to manually wire them together if you're trying to connect one run to another or one hole to another so what we're going to do is we're going to run some wires through this prototype board and then and then we're going to solder it onto the actual component yeah we're going to connect each leg one at a time with a, a ground and then the other two legs are going to go off to either the potentiometer or the motor so I'll run it through the, the wire through the top here. I'm actually going to heat the hole because what's going to, I realize, is going to allow the solder to stick to the hole and when it pushes through and then it's just going to be stuck in place, which is great. Like that. And then now I'm going to flip it over and push the wire onto the leg I want to attach it to. And then I'm just going to solder it together. I'm going to add a little bit more solder to it just to kind of make sure it covers it properly. Try not to make too much of a mess. <laughs> And that will be the ground wire right there. Now we're going to attach the wire for one of the other legs. Taking just a second here to get everything set up, and uh, I'm, it's blurry. It's a real bummer, but it's just a simple solder job. I mean, I'm literally just putting the wire through the hole that's closest to the leg, and then I'm just kind of pushing the wire onto the solder that's already on the leg, and um, just soldering it together. And since the wire is already tinned, it makes it really easy. So now we're going to attach the last uh, little wire. I'm remembering to keep it in frame here. Um, try to, I wish this thing would clear up. And you just want to make sure that you have a good connection with the solder because if you don't, then the motor will probably um, not respond to the potentiometers and it will actually vary in speed sometimes and you might see it like go up and down up and down and if that happens that's because you probably have a bad connection somewhere check it out make sure all the connections are good make sure nothing's uh shorted out together i think i have a little section that i need to um, remove a little bit of the solder because it looks like it's splattered over and almost uh, might be shorting something out so I'm just looking at it really carefully so I got that little piece done that was simple now we're going to do the potentiometer and this part again is pretty easy because with both of these potentiometers, we're just um, 
adding the extensions to it and that's going to allow us to then wire those little extensions to the um, to, to the harness well to the um, little attachment pieces the male and female attachments and one of those legs is going to just go straight um, I realize I don't want to wire it straight to the potentiometer And I think I remember here, oh yeah, I want to connect the, uh, so yeah, just attach the extensions first to everything, that way you can give yourself enough wire, and since they're both tinned, it was really easy to connect like that. Same thing with this one, it's more difficult because I'm trying to keep it in frame, I'm not like looking directly over it. So I'll have a little bit harder of a time with these than I normally would or that you probably would. Always inspect your connections. And this one I, I noticed a little bit was not completely connected. So you just want to make sure you have a good solid connection before you uh, apply the heat shrink. So I'm just looking at it, making sure everything's good. So what we're doing here is we're going to use a little bit of flame to very briefly run it under these and they will shrink up. And you don't really want to run the heat too long. It'll damage it, um, the heat shrink, but it shrinks really easy with just a quick, quick application of flame. There, and that, that helps to create a better connection. And cleaning the tip again. That's just awful. The moment I get it to work, it goes completely blurry. I mean, but yeah, I'm just, it's a simple soldering job that you can see that it's, you know, soldered together now. It's funny. It goes blurry when I'm working and then yeah. But yeah, um, I had to put the magnifying glass in there because I couldn't, I could not see what I was doing um, at the angle I was at. So it was unfortunate. Um, but now we're going to connect these two together from the other potentiometer to this section of the harness and it's a little blurry I do apologize and probably applying this solder from the top is a lot better than doing it from the bottom which is what I was doing because the heat was gathering the solder to the gun or to the tip instead of running it into the wires which was um, my bad but these are connected pretty well
So now we're just gonna connect this wire. There you go. And it goes out, that's great. It, at least you got to see it. Um, sorry, it's a little blurry, but that's good. There you go. I just wanna make sure this connection is really solid. Yeah, I'm just making sure that the solder is completely covering those wires. I'm definitely inspecting it. And don't forget to put the um, shrink tube on before you solder it all together and do some beautiful soldering job and then realize you have to desolder it to get your shrink tube back on there. Um, if you needed to, you could use electrical tape um, if you made a mistake and you don't have shrink tube or whatever. So we're just gonna quick heat to the shrink tube and it will shrink right up. So we've got our circuit made, and yeah, we're ready to wire this up. Let's do it. All right, we have our little circuit made, and this is the proper way to make it. Um, well, what we have to do now is we have to drill the hole slightly bigger in this so that we can uh, attach it there, because the hole that was natural to this PCB board was too small for the um, screw. I've already went ahead and drilled it a little bit, um, but I'm just going to show you here what I did. I basically just uh, slowly ran a drill um, one size, you know, that fit, and then slowly, slowly increased the drill size as we did with the cover to make a hole big enough for the screw. And the screw will fit right through there. We're going to attach this, make sure the ground is in there. And you'll just uh, kind of force the screw maybe the first time through the PCB board and it'll just screw right through. And then we're going to leave it a little loose so that we can um, put the little grounding wire we attached here. It's just going to slip underneath the grounding chassis screw and then we're going to screw that down against it to ground our little circuit. So cool, this is attached in there. Got the ground underneath there. So this little thing, it, it, it turns left and right as I'm showing you here. Um, this, is gonna, this is gonna be the resistor that's basically going to, we're gonna vary to get the correct tape speed at middle for our 500 ohm potentiometer. Cause this, this um, tape, or this uh, motor runs a little fast compared to a regular cassette tape. So if you got yourself a cassette tape that you knew and were familiar with the sound of, you could hear what the speed is when you play it, and then you can adjust the variable, the little variable speed potentiometer to get the correct speed. So I've um, I've went ahead and wired up the uh, the whole thing. 
And we're going to test it out now. Uh, again, be careful. This is powered. It's not battery powered. Uh, be careful where you stick your hands. You don't want to, you know, electrocute yourself. So let's put this in here. And we, we can see it's spinning pretty fast. So we're going to adjust this, but, but actually first we should put this potentiometer at middle. So that's going to be our middle speed. And it's moving really fast. So once we adjust this potentiometer, you can see how I'm changing the speed. I, I have a pretty good idea of what a desired speed would be. So by looking at it visually, and how fast the counter moves. So there we go. Now you can see as I'm adjusting this, I'm slowing it down and speeding it up. And um, yeah, we can get a really good speed out of it and we can get a really slow speed. Um, yeah, get a cassette that has audio you're familiar with and you can judge the speed pretty well, you know, by the sound of it and then adjusting your little potentiometer to get the correct middle speed. But um, you can see how slow this is getting. We're going to get like a really good, cool sound out of this. Yeah. Right on. Let's put this back together. So we've powered it off, and now you're free to kind of touch it. Pull the tape out. So we have our little washers here for the 500 ohm potentiometer. I'm going to put a washer on first. Um... Uh, if you forgot to remove this little lip here, the divot, it won't sit flush in here. So you'll just have to break that off. Um, but I think I've harped on that enough, so let's just do this. Uh, oh, when you remove the cover from now on, you'll probably just want to unscrew this thing and then remove the cover. That way you don't um, pull the wires or anything like that. So then another washer goes on and then the nut and you just kind of screw it down. And uh, make sure everything's all even. We're going to tighten it down here with um, the improper tool. Let's <laughs> use vice grips. Actually, these aren't even vice grips. These are pliers. Um, but yeah, I'm just making sure it's straight. And then um, so I know where middle is. I'm going to tuck the wires along here and it's a pretty good place. We want to make sure none of these wires get in the way of the tape player itself or um, just, oh, yeah, be careful. You don't want to pull on your wires too hard. Um, but anyway, just going to make sure none of the wires are in the way of anything that functions mechanically. We're going to close it right up. Make sure we don't see the wire there sticking out anywhere and just snap it back together like so. And then we remember the screws because we have a bag that tells us <laughs> where they go. But yeah, this is cool. We're nearing the end and I'm excited to uh, put some audio to this and see what it sounds like. Great. Right on. We've got it all set up. <laughs> I've added some little characters, aesthetic elements to our scene. I uh, see all the cool kids doing this, so why not? Um, some crystals I was given by some hippie ladies and uh, s some stuff I got overseas. And yeah, just fun stuff. Anyway, we've got it all plugged up here. Endless tape. Uh, loop cassette in there. Uh, be sure to watch a previous video on how to build those. Um, if you have any questions about soldering, you can watch my video before this about five tips for great soldering connections or leave me a comment in the section and I'll try to answer it for you. I'm no pro, but I've done it for years and um, I think I get away with it. So yeah, let's, let's test this out here. Slow it gets. Go even 
it's lower here. Super cool. Let's spread out the stereo. some effects pedals well there you go it works um, in previous videos I've done a jam with stuff like this so you can see how it works um, I used a chase bliss pedal on a previous one but any gu guitar effects pedals would work really well with this um, yeah I was playing guitar into this the other day um, and with an endless loop tape and recording stuff down and using various pedals and I was using a synth and a couple other tracks. It was really cool. It was a lot of fun. And then I was just jamming along with it with my guitar. And it sounds great. So these are these are great little four-track recorders and super cool devices that you can get for not too expensive. And you can have endless fun with it. Um, yeah. My last advice would be, you know, just when you do this, make sure you inspect it really well before you put it back together. You can see how the solder gets all over the place here. And that stuff can get on the control board and you don't want to uh, short out your investment or short out something that you worked on. So there we go. Customized pitch control. Um, I've showed you two ways to do it. First way I don't is the cheapest and i um, not sure if it's the advised way to do it. I, wouldn't, I would prefer that you follow my second path, which is using the actual uh, variable speed motor to get it done right. Um, it's not too expensive to do. You can buy those motors for about eight bucks a piece on eBay. Um, the potentiometers are really cheap. So all in all, it's not a big investment to do this right and learn something and have a really cool analog device. Um, I, I've had a lot of fun building these and, and modifying these. And hopefully in the future, I'll show you a switch that you can attach to turn off the... Um, the erase head, um, but the spacing is pretty limited where you can place the potentiometer, but um, check out some of the other four track devices and you can um, maybe modify those. Uh, you can do it to the Fostex X12, you can do it to the Tascam Porta 3 Mark II. Um, the Fostex is great because it already has the motor that you need. For some reason it has a variable speed motor in it, even though it doesn't have a pitch control inherent so the Fostex might be a good one to get and you can just basically add a potentiometer um, and it will uh, you can vary the speed um, it's the same process but you skip out on some of the you know having to buy the motor and stuff like that so um, yeah I would recommend the Fostex X12 if you're looking to buy one of these from scratch so if you like the video give me a thumbs up and uh, subscribe if you want to see more videos like this, and uh, if you thought something could be changed or you had a, a useful critique for me, give me a thumbs down and uh, tell me in the comments below. Um, I'm open to feedback and um, looking forward to see what you guys have to say. Um, if you have any requests for videos or just want to chat about this process or have questions, just throw them in the comments and I'll try to answer them. Uh, in the future, I'm going to be making a cigar box synth with uh, like filter and oscillators. And I'm just going to be building myself up to eventually showing you how to build your own pedals and stuff. And anyway, I hope to see you in the comments and see you in later videos. All right. Uh, stay cool. Bye.